when she said you make a beautiful Batman, I nearly sat like, <laughs> 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 I thought, have I just heard that from, you know, she wrote it down on my photograph, but I thought, then why, why, why can't Batman be beautiful? Oh my if, God. If Kim you know, in a world of artistic brilliance and cinematic mastery, Tim Burton's 1989 classic Batman phenomena took the planet by storm. And while Michael Keaton officially remains our favorite actor to don the cape and cowl, there is another individual whose humble story and beginnings we'd like to shine a great big beam of light on. Meet Carl Newman, the man who brought the Bat Ballet to life. Trained at the prestigious Lane Theater Arts and Dance and Drama, Carl's journey has been nothing short of extraordinary. His passion and proficiency have taken him on a mesmerizing journey, collaborating with a dazzling array of artistic talents and world-class choreographers. But it wasn't until an unexpected opportunity presented itself that was unlike any other that would ultimately help forever define his legacy. As the movement double for Michael Keaton in the 1989 blockbuster feature film Batman, Carl's grace, poise, and athleticism brought a whole new dimension to the Dark Knight. For 11 weeks at Pinewood Studios, Carl Newman transformed into the legendary Ballet Bat, seamlessly blending his dance training with the iconic bat suit designed by Bob Ringwood and sculpted by Vin Burnham. His collaboration with stuntman Sean McCabe and fight choreographer Dave Leia gave life to the Bat Ballet, a term coined by the one and only Jack Nicholson. It was Jack Nicholson himself who gave Carl the nickname Ballet Bat, a moniker that would resonate through the ages. Together with Tim Burton's visionary direction and Michael Keaton's cerebral performance, Carl Newman helped define the dark night of DC Comics on the silver screen for decades to come. Ladies and gentlemen, join us as we delve into the incredible journey of Carl Newman, the man behind the Bat Ballet, whose talent and dedication continue to inspire the world of dance and cinema, as well as most of the stuntmen who've had the privilege to don the cape and cowl. This is Carl Newman. Welcome to his extraordinary world. My name is Curtis with Rat Pack Matinee. I'm the founder and co-operator of the channel. And we started out doing videos just because we're movie lovers on this channel. You know, it's not just me. I mean, I represent us, but like, it's a whole bunch of people behind me. With that being said, this right here is actually our first interview. And I tend to be more honored for the person that we're interviewing today. His name is Carl Newman. And Carl Newman has such an, such an amazing story. Carl is a, a professional dancer, as well as he also served as the movement double for Michael Keaton in Batman 89. Correct, right, Carl? Absolutely, spot on. So, you know, with the recent interest again in Batman because of the Flash movie that just came out this summer, you know, my, my fascination for Batman 89 has never stopped. It's always been ever evolving, you know, and I've, I've loved every, almost every iteration of the character that I've seen from Michael Keaton to Val Kilmer to George, no, well, George Clooney, where he's, love him as an actor, but not my favorite bat, and even Christian Bale. But what I find interesting too is the work that goes on behind the scenes, the things that we don't know. And Carl, you can help shed some light on that. But I, before we get into all that, I actually want to just learn a little bit about, just learn a little bit more about you and uh, your story. So where are you from, Carl? Where, where, where did you grow up? Yeah, so I grew up, Curtis, in uh, Leicestershire, which is in the heart of England. It's, it's known as the Midlands, the East Midlands. And very, very beautiful county. Lots of forests, so good peeing lots of nice outdoors, if you like. But I always, always had an interest with music and and also dance. I loved sports. The dance, I used to see people like Gene Kelly, Fred Astaire, the Nicholas Brothers, yeah. you name it, all these wonderful people. Absolutely. And I think because of the drumming, you know, so I, was, I was a really keen drummer from about the age of 11. Oh, wow. Doing lots of sports. And, and kind of these things led on, if you like, together. So I started playing drums for a dancing school. And wow. then I did some dance socially with them and they said, you really should do more of this. So I started to do some lessons with this really good school in, in Leicestershire. Mm. And 
things like Tab, Jazz Modern. And then another guy was there and he said, you should really come to this ballet school that I go to. It's we do classical and contemporary ballet. And, you know, that sort of time, there wasn't many, many guys doing it, really. Of course, I know about, knew about Darius at, at Originally Cults. They were great guys, fantastic dancers. But I went along and it just changed my life because there wasn't so many guys, but, but it didn't matter because the teacher was so fantastic. He was so engaging. Yeah. He really encouraged me. And so I started off doing some contemporary with him. And then there was a lady that was from the Royal Ballet. So she got a very good training, started to do classical with her. And it, it just built from there. We did performances, really fantastic shows around Leicestershire. And then I thought, you know what? I want to do this as a profession. But rather than going into the classical dance side, I love jazz. I absolutely love jazz music anyway. Yeah. And so I went to a more commercial college, did everything. So we did term, jazz, border, national, harder uh, in ballet and jazz, did acting and singing as well. And so that put me in really good stead to, to go out there and but make a living right. really from that sort of field of work. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you want me to lead on from that, how things evolved from there. But, but Carl, you also, you trained, did you also train in martial arts? No, no, I, well, I had done some karate. I did, I did Shotokan okay. style of karate. Right. I, I think as a young guy that was so immersed in physical culture, I mean, the whole thing I used to love, bodybuilding aspect, you know, really right. training the body well. These were all things that I saw as a young guy, you know, growing up seeing Lou Ferrigno in The Incredible Hulk and of course Arnie Schwarzenegger. Frank yes. Zane was a guy I really uh, admired an awful lot for being a slimmer guy. Right. And a really good amount of muscle and really ripped. That really interested me. But of course, Bruce Lee was the one, wasn't he, that was just the most phenomenal physical specimen. But I mean, his strength, his mobility, his speed, everything. His mindset, everything. Everything. You'd sort of take all these different things from these people and, you know, I was absolutely nuts about my abdominals. So I used to train my abdominals ridiculously. And I, I used to love that thing where Bruce would lower himself or raise himself on a rope yeah. with his legs at such a 90 degrees. So they, yeah. they were things I used to to do. I used to lift my legs off the floor, sort of gymnastic style strength moves, if you like. Yeah. But yeah, I, I just I just loved the whole thing. I wasn't really a martial arts guy per se, but I did I did do karate for a while. I think with dance anyway, you're very mobile, you're very subtle. Right. So you can even give the illusion, you know, I, I could could be a good boxer, let's say, because people that saw me sort of sparring or doing exercises with boxing, you know, from time to time would say, I wouldn't like to get on the end. <laughs> <laughs> I hear it. I hear you. I'm sorry. And you know, you, hear you know, I, I grew up, you know, oh my goodness, my little brother, my younger brother and I, we, you know, we kind of grew up just loving combat sports, loving anything, martial arts, loving anything, just anything that was just like bigger than like Arnold Schwarzenegger, like you mentioned before, was one of our favorites growing up, Total Recall to Terminator. I mean, and also too, as I got older, I ended up falling in love with bodybuilding. I was, you know, bodybuilding myself for a while. You know, I started out for vanity reasons, but then as you go through the process, it was about so much more than that. I, I found my, my mindset just naturally changing and it made me like the way your body physically changes. It's a, that's, that's a bonus. I always found that the, the best thing you get from working out is the discipline and the way your mindset changes because you, you know, you just, you have a can do attitude. You refuse to say no to yourself and you just, you know, you're always pushing forward. You're always wanting to evolve. And that's like the people I saw growing up, like the Arnold Schwarzenegger's, the, the Frank Zane's, the, Franco Columbus, like I loved all these guys. And that's kind of like what Batman represented, represented for me too. It completely just blew my mind as a character. But let's talk about how you, 
How did you go about even getting an agent to even get a phone call to be the double, the, the movement double for Michael Keaton and Batman? How, how, how does like how did how do you go from dancing to that? How does that work? Well, I was the most laid back guy. Can't believe how massive they and laid back I was. And yeah. I was I was going through all the the training as a set college, and then when I graduated. I was very good friends with, with lots of people, but one guy in particular, uh, we used to write a lot of drama uh, and sketches together, but he said, look, I'm going in to see this particular agent called Dancers. And so I said, fantastic. So I went in with him and it, it was, again, the best thing I could have done because it was run at that time by two guys. One of the guys took a complete showing to me which was very very nice and took me on immediately we left that agency sort of walking on springs if you like just feeling very lazy very yeah. pumped by the whole thing lo and behold this call came in about the new bat you know i had really quite grasped what the agent was saying at the time because he being me and just being so laid back I thought initially it was some kind of comedy, believe it or not. I don't know what, what I was on that day, but anyway, we'll ignore that. But I, I went along to Pinewood Studios, and at that time, it was the first assistant director, Tim Byrne, a guy called Derek Crack. Right. Uh, and we had a really, really good chat, and left that feeling very good, but never heard anything. And then... The next thing down the line was I got this really exciting call. Like, Carl, can you come in and put the costume on and uh, show us what you do? So I was like, wow, this is it. So, you know, I, I was in London. I was in uh, northwest London. So it wouldn't have taken me very, very long to get on the tube train to get to Highwood Studios, which right. is what I did and got there. And it was fantastic because I, I love people, as you know who I am and, and I met the wardrobe team really great bunch of people yeah Finn Burnham was there you know sculpted the cow great great lady fantastic designer and then also that suit rang us Todd and Dave and uh, they put the costume on me and I must admit Curtis you know without getting above myself I, I did feel that this was a dream job for me because like we've spoken earlier about training. Yeah. I mean, I was very much a fitness fanatic. I have to say that. I mean, I was insane how I, how long I could train. And I, I also was good at weightlifting. And, and anyone that knows about training would know, that, yes, lifting weights is great. You know, all the different exercises that you can do. But weightlifting and especially doing snatch it's a very, very difficult discipline to do. It is. No, you, you can understand that because when you lift a heavy bar over your head, both your arms up, and then to go down in, in the sort of the crouch position, now you, you have to have a lot of suppleness in your hips and also it's really good. Then you have to press up maybe from the squat position up. But right. I, I got my gold award at to school, which was one and a half times my body weight for lifting, for lifting snatch and, and cleaning jerk combined. So, you oh know, and I could, I could do bunny hops all the way around the, the gymnasium, you know, because that was, it was a guy called Precious McKenzie, who was a fantastic weightlifter back in the day, who lived for Brit. Small um, guy, but he was phenomenal at lifting. And he apparently he used to do bunny hops all around the gym, you know, as part of his training. So that's the kind of guy I was. Yeah. I, I felt I felt so right for how the suit fitted me. And also, you know, without getting above myself, they said my jawline my, my face looked great. But for the cow, it was a good strong chin. So yeah. I felt really really pumped about that you know what it's like you, you know you can't can't want things too badly although you can but yeah i've been there before and i've been disappointed where people have misled me or i've you know yeah quite excited or whatever so i was quietly confident put the costume on ran up down these corridors and, <laughs> until they were ready for me. Oh and uh, 
Then they called me on the back knots, which was like one of these golf buggies that took me there. I was just blown away with how the whole setup looked. Yeah. That was very much in the zone because, as I say, you, you, you have to just kind of, you know, pull back and, and just wait. And then Tim asked me to do stuff, which I did. And then it just went from there. Yeah. Well, I wanted to also ask you, Carl, like, were you really like into the character Batman before you actually got got the part? Yeah. Were you really yeah. like like did you play comic yeah. books? Really? Yeah, I really was. I mean, I know that there's different you know counts regarding to Adam West and as yeah. that Batman, but you know, I have to say, as, as my sort of age at that time, yes, I, I was you know, only really quite young, sort of teen, if if that, you know when Adam was there, but, but even so, there was just something about that whole character and, and, and his enemies, his whole bunch of rivals, yeah. you know, the gadgets, the cogs, you know, it doesn't matter that it's so different now. And, and I think people can be quite cruel about Camp Helena because yes, that, that was then, you know, yeah. and, and what, what we have to remember is what I appreciated was that they were all such good actors. Yeah. Exactly. Um, exactly. And that, you know, Cesar Romero, I mean, Burgess Meredith, these kind of people, I mean, they're not just lightweights, are they? They know. No. Proper quality actors. Yeah. Yeah. And I was, I mean, I'm a, I mean, Batman 89 is my favorite Batman, but I'm a fan of Batman, the character in general. So I'm definitely, you know, my father who, my father also was born in, in England, actually. He was, he's actually born and raised in Birmingham. Oh, wow. Not far away then. Really? Yeah. Yeah. And so, West you know, Orleans. yeah, my dad, you know, growing up in, in England, he told me he used to watch a lot of reruns of the, the 66 show with, with Adam West and Burt Ward. And, you know, me growing up, my father and I, we used to love, we would sit down, we would run through marathons of the 66 show. I love the 66 show. I mean, it's not for everybody, but like, I mean, that interpretation is its just so classic to me, especially for that time. And yes. what Burt Ward, what, I'm sorry, what Adam West did with the character, I found was it was different from what I, I, I guess what the comic book interpretation was, but it was so perfect for that time when it yes. came out. It was so perfect. Yes. And I also think that like, you know, when 89 Batman came out, it was the perfect time for that as well. It was a perfect time for the character to have that that reintroduction as well yes. as a uh, another evolution too of the character where, where like you know audiences may have been aware of him before but like now we're seeing a whole different side the way it was content to be all yes. along yes. and it's just so funny Carl because I <laughs> I you know the way Batman moves certain nuances and the way he the way he stalks, the way he stands, every every single movement, there's, there's, there's a purpose behind it, correct? There's yes. not, it's, it's not just movement. There's a, there's a whole, it's, it's, it's meant to invoke emotion. It's meant to invoke fear. It's meant to invoke whatever it is he's trying to relay to, to criminals, to whomever. Yes. And it was so mind-blowing for me to know that you had such a vital part in, in, in the way Batman moves. Because I feel like you helped provide a blueprint for future generations of Batman. Even up to this day with Robert Pattinson, whatever stunt doubles, whatever doubles are playing, you know, are in the suit as well, that, you know, for shots that he can't do, they're following a, a blueprint that I feel like you set with Batman 89. And I've Thank said you. that to you in your comments before too, and I really mean that because like, that's why I fall, that, that's why, that's one of the things that I fell in love with Batman for is the way he moves. Like no, no other superhero moves like Batman. Nobody. So, it's just I want I, like I want you to explain some of your choices and why you decided to move in the way you did, and maybe even like some of the conversations we had with Tim Burton on why, like what message you guys were exactly trying to get across to the audience and the way that you guys were trying to present the character. Yeah, I think what was so great because was that. You know, I'd had some time with Todd, who who was one of the Wranglers, and he'd worked, you know, totally different, but he he worked a lot 
in skins, if you like, in costume and with, with puppetry. So I was doing something with him, but also with Tim. Tim was just so fantastic how, you know, for instance, that shot at the beginning where the, the muggers hear that sort of crunching mm -hmm. sound. Yep. And then I sort of you know, opened the cape uh, and then jumped down. Um, yep. We went through stuff together, you know, Tim and I, with, with almost like, you know, like a bird of prey or whatever, with, with the wings, you know, yeah. sort of like a really nice motion with the arms. And I think also, you know, I'd like to take my own sort of credit, if you like, for just how there was almost a naturalistic element in what I feel I had, Curtis, was this combination of, of multi-skills, if you like. You know, you could get, you know, like the latest guy that's with, with Michael in The Flash, you know, he's very much from martial arts background. But I think with me, the athletics, the running and the jumping that I did yeah. came in to, to very much the motion. So I, I felt, you know, even just like running, or jumping was very much part of my vocabulary in that sense. But yes, you're quite right. I, I did really think about, you know, bats have always had a fascination with as well. You know, really an amazing creature. Whenever I've I've traveled, when I lived in Australia and things, you know, I would always study them and look at them. But this was before then anyway. Because these things that you absorb over time, how you how you watch things and look at things and Dracula was another thing I was just wild about. I mean, no, that's a different kind of bat, but, but you know, the, there's that theatricality and, and the phantom as well. Yeah. So if you like, all these subliminal things were in, in my psyche that whenever there was, because I remember when they made the Batman fan film, The Oath, and it, it was wonderful when I was asked about if I could give some tips and, and advice and things. And I was saying, you know, just don't get too head of, ahead of yourself, you know, yeah. be in that mode. So yeah. Even like in the bell tower, I just, I could just visualize that I was in this very dangerous area because all these henchmen, these goons were about, but yeah. it, it was that being so alert, but also having just that movement to just, as you know, with the 89 costume, it wasn't more cumbersome or restrictive. Yeah. Off. Yeah. But, it's but for I, rubber, right? I mean, yes. Yes. Very restrictive. Very restrictive. But the way I got around that was I, I would do a lot of stretching before and, you know, I, I would be moving around with the cape and, and doing things and just getting that feel again and getting more fluid and loose into it. And, and then just my whole mind was in, in that character that being alert, being sort of nimble and stealth, stealth like, you know, the way yeah. I was moving and, and just that I could have this sensitivity to anything around me, if, if there was any movement or sound or whatever. It, that, that's the way I felt, you know, that's the way it works for me very much, you know, bringing all these things together as the same, the dance, the athletics. I just felt it was, it was made for me. I know that sounds strange, but it was almost like the disappointments that I'd had before of getting so close to some, some very big jobs. It was just building to this moment where Carl, this is for you because you're not a um, specialist in martial arts. It doesn't matter because what you bring is is the language, is the, the movement language that Batman was out. Yeah. And I've been very flattered when fans of people have said, you know, it was missing in returns or it's been missing subsequently because, you know, yes, everybody's going to do it differently, aren't they? Yeah. Um, but I, I think for me, Mobility and fluidity is is paramount. Yeah, Batman. yeah, it's a language all on its own. And I know, it is. I know you and I are both Bruce Lee fans, and, and he emphasized that. I feel like you know, like yes, I, I I've always had because I come from a pretty athletic background myself. I come from a family of athletics. I played basketball myself. I I've done you know so many different sports, more for recreational, but it was also because 
I always felt I had a natural ability, just a net, just natural athletic ability. And I would just remember just being so you've been to a flow, you know, like, uh, you like, you know what you're capable of. And then once you know how to harness that, you get into such a flow when it's time, when it's time to present, you get into such a yes. flow and so, just a switch. And yes. oh my goodness, I can't tell you how many times, Carl, my brother and my younger brother now playing, you know, superheroes as young kids. And I'm trying my best to move just like Batman moves. You know how you talk about the sensitivity to like everything that's around you, like the way, the way he, he stalks, the way he, you know, just every movement, there's a purpose. I don't even know if you realize your impact, Carl. I've been, you know, we've been corresponding through IG for a few weeks. And in that time, I've been looking at your profile, I've been looking at the comments you've been getting from people. Like you're getting a lot of love and it's well-deserved. It's so well-deserved. Had we not come, had I not come across Mr. Mom's interview of that day, I don't, I don't know if we would have, I feel like Batman fans would have been so cheated had we, had we not ever been put onto your story. Because like, it's, 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 it's so, it's so imperative the way you really just, you're part of the reason why I love Batman so much. I mean, I have to give Keaton his just due because he's course, the principal actor, course. right? Oh, he's amazing. Like, love, like, love Michael Keaton. I, I mean, I love Michael Keaton and pretty much everything he does. Everything he does. Oh, he's, he's, he's incredible. Everything he does. But to know that, you know, you really were just very paramount. I think as a dancer, Curtis, as well, you know, you, you have this thing within you because of other things that you've seen. I mean, I, I was the type of guy as well. I remember talking with Dave Merge, one of the ranglers that the might run returns. There's done many things. And we were talking about these actors that do, you know, th these movies with, with the apes, you know, and I, I'd have loved to have done that because I think there was, felt like there was no limitation yeah. to what I could do in that way because what I've mentioned in previous podcasts and things is, is about the commitment of a dancer. You alluded to it earlier about saying this focus that, that weight training and, and these sports give you is, is that it's this, this attitude that you know, can't be beat. You, you won't be stopped if you like. It, mm -hmm. You're so determined and, and it also helps discipline within your life and how you eat and how you do other things as well. There's this wonderful discipline that comes from sport, dance, whatever. And, and I think that was the thing with me that, I mean, what really hurt was, was not getting turns in a way because after, after 89, if I can say such a thing, I was even fitter and stronger. I, I'd made a fitness video for, for a company and they, they got me to demonstrate the advanced exercise. I always just keep going and going, going, you know, this, this insane burst, you know, and, and I was so sort of jacked and so fit and so strong. And, and I felt that I had the world even more at my feet, you know, after, after 89. But as we know in life, it, it's all dependent on how other things map out. And, yeah. And subsequent things, and I know Tim wanted me in return, but there was there was the politics, I think, the logistics that went on. But you know, just I'm so grateful to the fans. The love and appreciation has been overwhelming. And, and something else I wanted to say on that is that I think really I never really pushed it. You know, I was the kind of guy, and I think dancers and people are the do that job you're immensely proud you move on you know you're looking for the next thing and it's not to say that you didn't absolutely get bowled over by it but it was just that you know it's it's the next paycheck you know to live you know and yeah. pay the, the bills and stuff but what actually happened was that about two or three years ago during the covid time i, I just kept seeing so many of my pictures and different things appearing yeah. And I thought, hang on a minute, this this is incredible. And I started contributing to this fandom, this wiki fandom site. And basically I was told that you were the missing link, you're the guy they've been waiting for. I think I think what happened, Francis, was that in many ways my my glory, my contributions had been 
kind of trampled over, if you like, or, or smothered over. And it, it seemed awful that I just wanted to let people know, hang on, you know, I was there second to, to Sean. It, it was the original stump guy for Malikwa. I, I came in second. I was there for 11 weeks. As, as one person has said, a lovely guy, you're so embedded in yeah. the movie, which I love that, that sort of phrase. That's how I feel, you know, that people will know if, if they're the cosplayers or, or just from looking at documentaries, how difficult it is moving in that suit yeah. and to make it very fluid it's the word i would use but you know there's nothing worse than that being wooden and, and labored and hindered you know yeah. it wants to just feel like you put that suit on and wow you've got these powers that you made it look that way. you made it look that way. <laughs> <laughs> made it look so fluid like i mean i've heard how you describe it in some of the other podcast interviews and i mean you must have just been sweating buckets in that thing because you yeah. would have like how, like, how long would you, I mean, because you would be shooting for how long in a day? Long really? time. Yeah, long time. I mean, you would get the whole spectrum of hours. You know, sometimes you might be doing things in the afternoon. Other times you'd be going in the evening. There was a lot of hanging around because people that know about film work, it, it, it is, it's very labored in the sense of things have to be set up, all, all the effects. Yeah. The, the vehicles, if there's things... Or, or, you know, the lighting, you name it, it's it's all there. And so, yes, I'd be in that suit for an awful long time. I mean, we actually filmed, I know we're not cold as a country compared to America and Canada, but, but I think where we are a bit weird is that we're a, quite a damp cold here. So it's quite, it sort of penetrates for us. We were filming yeah right through the winter months and I remember you know and even Michael had it Michael had a really big coat that he had over his suit if he was waiting and I'd, I'd done some work with a ski company so I had this sort of ski suit that was a really big one and I used to just put that in as an extra layer yeah. because you know you, you could get very warm one minute and then freezing the next but yeah the suit as I alluded to and said before, I, I just never even thought about it. I never thought, oh my God, it's hurting or it's, or I'm sweating. I, you know, without trying to sound clever, I, I just took it all in my stride because that's how dancers are. We, we are masochists, you know, we don't, we don't worry about ourselves. It's You'll suffer for your art. Yes. Yes. That's Absolutely. beautiful to me. That's so beautiful to me because I'm, you know, I used to, I used to record, I, well, I used to be an artist of sorts. I used to do hip hop music some years back. And, you know, what I always loved about it, I guess from the era of hip hop that I loved the most, it was all about the craft. It's all about the craft. And, you know, if it's about something other than the craft, you're doing it for the wrong reasons. And you can always tell when somebody is doing it with love and somebody, if somebody is doing it for a paycheck. And I love how you just said that. Like, it's just... Dancers do suffer for, for for their for their art. I mean, like I've seen, I've seen some of the feet of some of these, you know, these ballet dancers. I mean, like, oh my goodness! Just going back to the hip hop uh, Curtis, Grandmaster Flash and the Melly Mel. Oh the yeah, Mel. Mel. yeah. Well, I saw those guys. I mean, just phenomenal. So I've I've loved all that stuff as well. Yeah, I love all that as well. You know, I I, I embrace so many different threads of of, of things, but. No, no, no. Speaking of music, since we're on the topic of music, did you or did you not work with Prince during the when he because I know Prince did the, the soundtrack to 89 Batman. Did you were you in that video at all? With the, oh, how I wish. I mean, this this I I was saying to to some people before, you know, isn't it crazy in life that you know we, we know that that sort of cliche, you know, being in the right place at the right time or, or whatever. But but what had happened was I was actually getting ready to film in the back wing because I did a lot of the insert shots. For, so that was a really cool thing to do, you know, talk about having a fantastic toy to play with, being in one of the coolest things, which is the original back wing. Right. But I was waiting to go in and... Prince was there in the actual soundstage and, and we were very, very close. And I, I literally, you know, he, he's someone I've absolutely loved for many, many years. Uh, he's such a genius, so sadly missed. But 
I, I just wanted to break the ice with him, you know, because it seemed an appropriate time. You know, it wasn't like there was loads of fans or, or people around. It was, it was the crew. There was no other cast members there, just, just myself. And I just thought, you know, I, I wanted to just talk to him. So I commented on how amazing everything was, but he just didn't want to converse with me because, yeah. you know, what would have happened if, if, I, if I could have said, you know, later is, look, now I'm a professional dancer, you know, I mean, I, I, what I'd, I'd have died to have been in this video. Yeah. Died to yeah. Have been in that. That's just, you know, a dream, isn't it? To work with someone. And, and, you know, people like Jackson, when Michael Jackson was alive, he was coming over to London quite a lot. So you were around these kind of... You, know, you, actually, got to, you actually met Michael Jackson? I, I didn't do, but a choreographer I'd worked with, he, he was a teacher at my college. He'd, he'd done some work with him. You know, so these, these kind of people, they do come over as we know they're around. Yeah. And they, they use the lovely facilities in, in the UK, but... As we know, it, it's just a real crying shame when don't get a chance to at least talk to someone. And, and you know, if it has said, "Oh, that's great, Carl," you know, I'll see what I can do. Or if he didn't, if he didn't want to use me, fair enough. But to just stand for the conversation, yeah, yeah, not let that flourish. Because, as you know, with me and what I pick up from you, you is I absolutely love life. Absolutely. You know, and I love to help others. And I, I just think we, we're only here for such a short time, really. Yeah. That's not, not no morbidity in that. But, you know, let's let's embrace one another wherever we're from. Just we're here. Let's have a fantastic time. You know, as long as no one's getting hurt, that's the most important thing. We help one another and, and can achieve so much more together. I love that, Carl. I mean, no, I, I hear you, though. I hear you. And going back to what you said before about dealing with disappointments and then when that, you know, when a, when, a, when a moment arrives that you know it has your destiny written all over it. It has your destiny written all over it. You've, you've dealt with the disappointments before. You dealt with the no's. You've dealt with the, you know, times where you're like, you felt you were right there at the door and it was shut right back in your face. And then to have an opportunity like this come up, it's like a and dream come true. It really was because also something I I absolutely love is photography. So I love to do it myself and love to to witness other photographers and, and I've met great photographers through like social Herbert's? media as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and and through the social media and and you know what really loved me was was the aesthetics of things as well. So I think growing up as a as a young guy. And you, you mentioned it with vanity, you know, we, we, we like to have a nice chisel physique or, or we, we like to scrub up well and, and groom <laughs> and all these kind of things. So Absolutely. I had, all, I had all these books as well growing up as a young guy and I had this men's grooming book, would you believe, which had all these, these models in that had really good physiques and I was sort of, you know, doing all that. But, but what I mean from all this is, is that just, I admired obviously Sidney Poitier, yeah. Cary Grant, uh, you know, these good looking, handsome men that actually dressed really nice and had mm -hmm. impeccable manners and, you know, being refined. Absolutely. You know, and that, that's always how I've, I've acted, if you like, it is that, you know, whenever I go out, I'll make an effort because I Absolutely. think you can, you can slob around in, in clothes, you know, as people seem to want to do. But to me, if, if I'm going out, I want to dress up, I want to feel good. And it's, and it's, the whole experience is better, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, trust me, Carl, I'm the same way. I may not look like <laughs> now, but trust me, I am. Oh I, no. I'm, I'm very, you know, I, I'm like you, I like gentlemen that know how to present themselves to the world. And yeah. I actually like making an effort. I've always liked clean cut role models. I like, you know, like people, like you said, like Fred Astaire, love Mike, Michael Jackson's my favorite entertainer of all time. Just oh, love how oh, he yeah. was so creative and just so unique in his, his approach to fashion and specifically fashion. With all these different things through the Hollywood movies and, and everything else. Then of course I saw these amazing photographers like Bruce Weber and, mm. and Herb Ritz. Mm -hmm. And so it was like somebody was, was shining an even bigger light down on me and saying, well, Carl, we're not only going to give you 
this movement language to do for Batman. But we're going to kind of use you, and I'm not going to get ahead of myself, but really like a bit of a pin-up Batman, that you'll be the one that will go in front of Herb Ritz. Of course, Herb's going to do Michael and Jack without question. They're the yeah. stars of the movie, and yeah. Herb's done lots of the other actors, hasn't he, throughout that sort of time. But I think what really gave me an even more massive oh, its shining light was, yes, Carl, you're going to do the session with her and Brits. We're also going to get you to do other photographic sessions around set of Gotham. And and those photographs will find themselves in, in lots of magazines all around the world, which yeah. I never thought about at the time. Yeah. But, but for me, that was another amazing thing because as I say I love uh, photography and I love to be able to put a costume on and, and that that magnify itself through the photography yeah you know, of how I how I stood and how I brought the cape down and these various things that you like it's it's this is kind of a full circle moment for me personally too raw because I remember seeing your photos as a kid you know, maybe different magazines. There were promo shots you did with Herb Ritz, correct? Yeah, well, they never featured so much in the sense of they were out there, which was incredible. And I, I, that's where I started to see them a lot more. But I, I think what it was, was that they they felt that, you know, no disrespect to Sean and Dave, fantastic guys for what they did. But I think they just felt, we want to see show what Carl does as a professional dancer, you know, in, in mm. this suit. Because I, I saw myself more, I mean, I've always loved acting as well, and I did quite a bit of acting at, at college and maybe saw myself going more into that side. But I think it was just so lovely to give me that opportunity to say, well, look, I, I think you'll know how to pose more and do what we need to showcase that, that sort of athletic that dance element, you know. Yeah. I mean, it's not like I'm doing a full blown no. dance number in the cave, but but yeah. you know what I mean. Dancers know how to hold themselves, you know. Yeah. And I've seen the. I mean, like the photos, they're beautiful photos. And the photo, he, I mean, even the photos he took of, of Michael and Jack as well. Oh. I mean, those are iconic photos. Oh, they're iconic really? photos. But I can see what you mean in terms of knowing how to pose and knowing how to show off the agility and the fearlessness of Batman, showing him in the way yes. that. That was what you were perfect for. And I, I've seen those photos on your page and they're, they're, I mean, they're beautiful photos. They're absolutely beautiful photos, but comparing them to the other ones with Michael and J with Jack, like I could see what you mean. Why, why you were chosen for that as well. Well, you'll know this. I mean, you know, and it's nothing to do with Michael, but, but Michael is an actor is going to stand, they're going to slump slightly on, on one hip, you know, or they're not necessarily, I'm not saying that you have to make things always a hero pose, but you could be my of your Yeah. Yeah. Because as I, as I was experiencing, I, I used to go to this place in London uh, called the Actors Centre and they, they did a lot of workshops and things in all kinds of technique of acting. But, you know, they, they were always promoting with actors, you know, keeping fit and and maybe doing, you know, things like yoga or dance or, or other things, which will never go amiss. So I, I think, yeah, you, you're not expecting an act to, to, to do everything. But, but I think that's the difference with a dancer that they know that they're not going to slump on a hip a bit more or, or slouch. They're just going to know how to lift, right. you know, lift the chest and, and, and throw the top of the head, you know, all these things we learn, making it wooden, but just, just making it that wonderful sort of presence, right? which is what we need. I always wish if, if it would have been the opportunity where I could have got with Michael earlier, because I, I don't know what Michael's routine was before filming. I'm sure he did some form of training or whatever, but I, I would just love to have worked with him or done some stretching exercises or helped him. You know, what, I, what I've what i learned over many, many years, not just a few years, yeah. but right from the age of early teens. Right. Things I've learned that could have helped him. But with, with these filming, and certainly with the first one, there was never, never seemed to be enough time or enough communication to allow that to happen. 
I mean, right. to illustrate what I mean, and you'll know this, Curtis, is that when I was given that opportunity, they said to me, Carl, can you help the goons learn how to do mine? So right. this is this is my point, is right. that if someone will give me the opportunity, I can then go into a studio with those guys and I'll say, right, these are all different my sort of scenarios or movements that you can do, try these out. Right. And they may have had some themselves, which they did. So we looked at that. Mm -hmm. And then that movie, that scene, he's great. You know, it was it's a memorable it? scene. It's a great scene. And it's so funny, Carl, because I didn't, again, I didn't, the little things you don't know, right? Because like, why would what's considered the movement double of, for, of Batman, why would he have anything to do with a scene like that? Like, so that's so, that's so, that's what I'm saying. It's so great that we know who you are now because like, that that scene is you can't mention that movie without that scene it's such a it's 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 poetry in motion it's it's a beautiful scene the way it's choreographed the way the guys are suddenly doing the movements the miming it's how how was that because that's such a great scene it's such a it's a memorable scene how was that working on that yeah, well it just it, you know i i play all these things down you know i i used to play it all down and because that's the kind of person but, you know i you see them, these scenes again, and certainly when I went to a, a double feature you know, recently, and, and I, I even saw things myself that I never saw before because it was a it was a huge screen and, and you know, the way the evolution of these technologies and things are done. And, and, and I was never that close to the screen before when I saw it in the cast of Chris, but I, I think it just, just fills me up thinking, I can't quite believe that, you know, I was a part of that because oh. it, it it was meant to be very over the top, which, which we know it was. Yeah. But but it, everything that seemed to happen, it it was like a dream, wasn't it? Because I, I, I couldn't have wished it for it to have been any better. That that's the way I felt. It just just had everything. This it was almost pantomime esque and, and you know, it's so over the top, yet quirky and mad and cocky, whatever words you want to give it, but just brilliant. Yeah. Sinister. Sinister. Oh. <laughs> oh my goodness. Now, Carl, did you have, did you work with Kim Basinger at all while on set at all? Did you guys interact? Yeah. Yeah, very much so. Initially, when I was there, we, we never really got to, to know one another properly. And then as, as time evolved, I think one of the best things for me was when Batmobile drives to the Batcave and mm -hmm. there's quite a lot of me that, that then ensues, which is when, when I get out of the car with Kim mm -hmm. and there's a lot of that again, walking around, you know, it was kind of a bit of a labyrinth, that, that Batcave, you know, different levels and steps, different things. And again, you know, just, just telling people. Just getting out the car. Yeah. I mean, and I'm, I made it obviously very fluid getting into the car. That was amazing the way you did it. I was like, out. I mean, like, not everybody can, I don't know many people that can do that because the way it was seamless. I remember when the, the scene where you're hopping into the car from the museum, where, the, where, where they're running at the museum, and you, yes. you, know, you know, you hop in as well as, I, was it, I guess it was a double for Kim Basinger to hop in? Was it? With Cy Hollands. Yeah, it was Kim's double. But, you know, it, I think there was a lot of me in that black cave and so kim was fantastic you know we we were very very close if you like because we were sitting together in the car and, and then we, we moved out together and when i led yeah and then it, it intercuts between me and michael then all as it gets at the top with the computer screens and right. i think it's me that gets in and then it's all michael but no she she was amazing i mean she was just so fantastic i think when she said i mean why, why can't I say this? When she said you make a beautiful Batman, I nearly fell over. Like, <laughs> I thought, have I just heard that from, you know, she wrote it down on my photograph, but I thought, you know, why, why, why can't Batman be beautiful? Oh, my if, if goodness. Kim, if Kim says it, you know, I'm so, oh, that, that, obviously, you could knock me over with a pen. Oh, and my goodness. She I mean... wrote that, but she was lovely. And she was someone, as an actress, that I'd always... Admired, you know, Absolutely. visually and, and, you know, very talented as well. 
Absolutely. I mean, she's still stunning to this day. She, I mean, back then, I mean, like Jesus. Well, still to this day, she's gorgeous. But wow, you got. You can imagine, you know, it was, yeah. it was hard to take your eyes off it during scenes. And, you know, there, there was a lot of that going on where we were waiting around. And, you know, there might be situations where the canteen facilities came on set and, and they brought things. Then, of course, everybody, you know, Jack, Michael, Kim, whatever, might be having bacon sandwich or horse sausage sandwich or whatever. Healthy food was was on. <laughs> no, but in the winter months you don't mind, do you? But yeah. no, she she was and and both Michael and, and Jack were fantastic. Yeah, but you didn't... social encounters as well. Social yeah, encounters. yeah, not many, but the few that you that you did have with them, they were they were pleasant. Oh God, yeah, absolutely, awesome. yeah, awesome. absolutely. I mean, I think when you get to see people sort of out of character as well but, but when you see them in a social setting and and jack would would make me die of laughing because he was he was a serious flirt with me i mean you know i just i go to the territory with him i, I think i you know i i admired all that because let's face it who doesn't like to be a flirt and a flirt that it was just the, the things he would say to to Women, you know, uh, look fine. I didn't ask, and it, it, it was just brilliant. It was just yeah. hilarious. Yeah, it's just a great character. And did he seem like he would be fun to be with on set? He seems like he's always just telling stories or just keeping the conversation just nice and light and funny. Yeah, well, one of the best things for me with Jack was in the Bell Tower. So there, there is the scene where. I'm basically stalking you. Yep, I know what you're um, saying, yep. As, as you know, and I'm, I'm just where Kim, Vicky Vale is, is dancing with him. But prior to all that, you see you see that as an audience, but, but you, what you don't see is the amount of time that I've been there. So yeah. I've been with Tim and Jack in very close quarters. It, it's not like they said, oh, Carl, you start from over there. Yes, I, I probably would have done the scene eventually from there but you're, you're in very close quarters so you're you're talking or you're having a drink you know because it's very very hot yeah having all that and and he he was just fantastic i think he was so really praised me i think in many ways for the way i moved and did things within that because to say when when things are edited you only get a snippet don't you or, or an essence of it but I, I would have done that scene like on the X's chemical rooftop where I'd actually run in a whole distance, but they use that bit where I sort of come in and, and sort of look and then swirl and go off. But it was beautiful, by the way, Carl. Thank you. That was beautiful. I mean, again, there are, that's, that's such an, another iconic scene. Every Batman fan, if, I mean, every diehard Batman fan, that's a scene that always stands out. I look forward to that scene after like, you know, the, the Joker goes down to the, 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 the chemicals and then, you know, that scene is just beautiful. The way you did, the way, the way you just turned around and you, it was, it was so fluid with the cape and the, yeah, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. And then having the, having the, the access, the access Sorry. chemical side in the back. I mean, that, thank you so much. I mean, that, that was a really scary moment because that was actually very dangerous to do and even getting to that to that rooftop was was hazardous in itself believe you me when you've got full costume on and you're climbing up very exposed steps yeah um and and the wind's in the wrong direction here the wind is right behind me and it's wet and there's these caves and you know it, it just it just seemed like a mission impossible in a way. I mean, a bit of its own cruise, but I've got, I've got to do this. And again, what we were saying before about this, this sort of strength mentally. Say, right, I know I can do this. There's no safety measures whatsoever. If I'd have slipped, that would have been it. You know, seriously. You know, How are there no safety measures put in? No, no they, they just did. They just didn't even wow. do it. I know. 
and, and so I had to think about preserving, obviously, my life. But but I thought, right, I won't uh, kick off and say, no, I'm not doing this, you know. So I, I can do it. So I, I just methodically worked it out right, with the distance and how many paces I could do and maybe like a bit of a safety measure as well. Oh, my goodness. Uh, and, and then I did it and, and it, it worked. And, and, you know, the sense of elation and, and everything else is just palpable. I mean, it's just mind-blowing to, to come away and think, wow, they're, they're so pleased with that. But also, I've, I've managed to survive as well. It's madness, isn't it? It's, that's insane. I'm Batman. I've always had a love for, for theatrical arts. I've, I've always loved... Yeah. You know, the whole process of making a film. I, I mean, like, I'm just a little bit fanatic. Just, just, I go nuts over it. I go nuts over yes. the whole season. You know, because it's, it's, I look at it as like a form of escapism. You know, it's a time for me to escape reality and just go into a world where I feel connected, yeah. where I feel, you know. Yeah. I, the, that's, I think that's the way it should be. You know, yeah. I, I think that that escapism is what we all need. So the amount the wealth of, of music and film and, and everything it, it, and it's there in life isn't it that you say to people it's all there for you just just take it you know you don't have to do everything take as much as you can immerse yourself because otherwise it's it's such a crying shame you know all these different things that are there so you gotta take like your opportunities you, when they come like you yeah. I, I just enjoy Everything, and I think because of my nature and the way I am, I've, I've just gone somewhere, and then some things happen. You know, like yeah. I was, I might have gone down. And, this is true. I, I've been in London. I don't live there anymore. But when I've visited, and I've gone down, I thought, and go down this street, and then, oh my word, there's a Marilyn Monroe exhibition down. You know, seriously, and the, these things have happened where I'm, I've had that about me. Yeah. That sort of quisitiveness and, and love of life and, and different things. And it's been amazing. It really has been amazing. How does it feel for you after all these years, looking back on the experience? Give me some of your fondest memories that you won't ever forget of being on set. Just looking back, it, it never, never, ever paled. It just gets stronger and stronger. And, and does it seem surreal to you? It does. It does because even having conversations with or Ringwood, the designer, alluded to the fact he can't believe it's 34 years this year, isn't it? Yeah. He can't believe after all this time it's as strong as ever. But I think what it reinforces in me, Curtis, is, is just to say that you, you will never, you will never uh, erase quality. You will never do that because when something is... We know things date, we know things have done differently now, but, but what I loved was when I saw screening of, of 89 with The Flash, and it wasn't yeah. the complete Flash, the ending was missing, but the young audience absolutely loved 89 because when you've got people like Jack Nicholson, who are so brilliant, and you've got that set design that was created with Anton first, and then the direction of Tim, and the music from Danny Elfman. Yeah. It, just it will live on forever and i think that's what gives me the most satisfaction is, is to think that it's pop culture isn't it really getting that bat signal shot at the end for me i was thinking well that's going to be there you know long long after i've got you know my another journey. iconic scene yeah. a very iconic scene do you mind going into that just briefly because wasn't didn't filming rap when they had you come back to, was, was that the story or was that always planned? No. No, no, what actually happened, that was very, one of the first shots that I did. Oh, wow. Because I think there's, there's been a lot of conjecture over it. And, and I know on the superhero podcast, you know, stuff you should know podcast, that they, they was, we were saying about people thought it was a puppet or they thought it wasn't human or whatever. And, and you know, the reality is I was there, I did that scene, so I know, and I'm not just making this up. I, I've, ne I've never been like that. It, it was one of the very first scenes that I did, and, and Tim had me in full Batman regalia, standing on, a, standing on a very big platform, and it looked amazing because 
obviously with that powerful turbine, mm-hmm. that industrial sound blowing. But again, as I say, with a dancer, you know, knowing how to lift and, and you know, how sort of presence, which is felt yep. within, but projects out. Yep. You know, you've got your, your chest, you know, out. You're so proud. Yeah. Just, you know, mind blowing. I mean, you wish in a way that it was that the times were that people were there and they, can you imagine, because if someone had been there and been taking behind the scenes photographs each time, yeah. what that could have created for an audience, for, for a public as well, to, to think that, wow, that's that's how that was done and that was cold there, look, and, and just think, why didn't that happen? Because there's been times where I've been confused whether it was me or Michael, but yes, it's, it's, it's going to be Michael because he, he was the main guy. But I'm sure there's lots of stuff that I haven't seen or nobody's seen that exists. Yeah. yeah. Because I was in, in those areas, you know, yeah. in, in the Bell Tower. For instance, the flying in shot at the very beginning, the first initial summiting, mm-hmm. you know, coming down at the cave and then just lowering. Okay, but I, I know, I know. It's, I, I, it's. It, I know what you mean too, Carl. Because I mean, that end scene where you're, you know, where you're, where you're standing and you're looking at the bat signal. It, your silhouette just looks, it's perfect. I don't. I wait for that scene at the end of the movie. I don't take it off until then. You know, like, it's, it's just incredible. Again, and I just feel so humble to have come across your story. But I also wanted to give you, I also wanted to mention this also too. I know when your IG recently posted that you recently got some some praise from the second unit director of Batman 89, Peter Mc, McDonald, was it? Yes, that's right. And he said that you were really the only person that could have helped pull off yeah, doing I mean, the things that you did. Like nobody else probably could have been able to do it the way you did it. Like you were instrumental in it being the way it is. Yeah, I mean, you can imagine I was just blown away because Peter is a fantastic guy. He's He's got an amazing sense of humor. And uh, so many occasions, he would be quite cheeky to me, quite sort of funny. You know, I think he had a crazy, I think he used to call me batty or, or something really strange. Now, that was his sense of humor, but he, he was a great guy. He really was. And... You know, sometimes these things, they're not going to come out, are they? Because you're you are in the thick of the moment, you're doing these things. And it was lovely when I had a conversation with Tim afterwards. But so for what Peter said, I, I was, I nearly brought a tear to my eye. I mean, I, I just couldn't believe someone could say that, you know. Yeah. Just someone of his caliber that's worked on a whole raft of, of movies, you know. Yeah. The I wasn't even aware. I wasn't even aware that he did Rambo two and Rambo three. I didn't. I wasn't aware that he was the director of that of those. Batman and Robin and, and huge you know, amount, wow. huge amount of films. His his sort of resume is is incredible. And but yeah, I mean, the reality is, you know, as I think with people, it, it's such a shame that we can't sometimes talk and say things to others. But to have gone into that. Description, if you like, it just blew me away. You know, yeah. to say that. Yeah, you know, when I was reading the caption, I, I was thinking to myself, I'm like, wow, I'm like, Carl must be so elated right now, because like, to get that kind of praise, even after all these years, and to still be remembered and valued for what you brought to the film, I mean, it would send me over the moon. So I can only imagine how you felt. This this chapter, honestly, because has just been the the amount of love and, and appreciation of, and, and just everything about it. I just it's it's priceless. It really is. I mean, to, to me, if nothing else happens, that's how I always felt. You know what? I've made a note of everything that sort of happened since I got back on the trail, if you like, and. Yeah. All these wonderful fan art pictures that have been done and people sending me things and you know this, this I saw it here you Didn't know I'm done by an artist and got another one being framed I mean even figure sculpts I saw I saw you, you know people are making figure sculpts of me now too to put on their one six scale hot toy figure yeah. Batman and which yeah. is 
Carl, that's, but, but you know what though? It's, it's, it's so well-deserved. And this well, is what I'm talking you. about. Like now that us diehard Batman's, Batman fans know who you are, this is just, this should have been, this is overdue. This is overdue for you. I'm no. so grateful to you, Curtis, but I'm not just saying it because you're here. You're just such a great, genuine warm guy. And, and Thank just, you. you're honestly, no, seriously, you just, you know, that means such a lot to me because people like you, I mean, it, it, it's priceless, you know, but there's so many people in the world, but there's not enough, <laughs> I feel, of guys like yourself and how I've always been and acting, but just to have appreciation for others and, and that respect and to help others and everything like that, you know, it, it just just makes the world a more beautiful place. It's so much better when when we can just have these connections and influences and share them. Yeah. And I, I think that's what's so amazing for me that, you know, to say this new chapter is is beyond magical, but more and more things are happening. Even for the fact of can be achieved, who knows? And, and it's that collaboration again. Yeah. And, and if it helps that photographer, or it's, it's just something different for them, that can only be good. And I just think there's much more that could be happening. Really. It's an, an incredible, inspiring story that's inspired me. I mean, and Batman literally has been my, my favorite superhero of all time. I'm a big DC Comics guy. I collect the comics, love Marvel, but Batman has always been the one that's, I feel like Batman resonates with people because he's, he doesn't have superpowers. He doesn't have, all he has is a will that is unbreakable. He's incredibly physically fit. Who he has the Batmobile. What else can I say? What, what, <laughs> what, what else is there left to say? It's just, there's a little bit of Batman in all of us, I feel. And I think so. I think there's a little bit of Batman in all of us. And Carl, I can't even express to you how great I am for this opportunity. Thank you so much. Thank it's you an so much. absolute pleasure. Thank you and so much. I'm just, I am extremely grateful for you reaching out. Constantly. I really am. I, I thank my lucky stars that you saw that Mr. Mung collected well and that, that, you know, that gave you a, an introduction yeah. that, that we could do this because mm -hmm. What, what I want to do is that I want to keep inspiring and saying to people, just go for it. You know, just live your dreams, do whatever you're doing. Don't give in. Right. You know, it, it's there because I had to follow it through an awful lot with even stigmas. You know, when I was growing up, you're a guy doing dance, but you have the last laugh because you you do these things or you meet these people and, and whatever and, and don't have to prove anything but I just want to keep inspiring people to say look you know, if you write if you paint if you take pictures whatever I mean it's it's lovely when I hear from young guys or illustrators or, or artists or whatever and it was you you influenced me and I'm like wow really? you know that that's just incredible so yeah. if I can do that and, and make the be world better and just help these people then that's everything trust me carl you have trust me and that's and i'm not just saying that I'm, i i mean that wholeheartedly and you know it's 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 very rare that you come across people who are genuinely good warm people like yourself and if, if we have more people like that people who are not so reserved and willing to say like hey you know just be just being personal being friendly being uh vulnerable about your own <laughs> shortcomings you know like i think we could learn so much from each other as, as opposed to in competition with each other all the time or just hold on. Sure. You know, like it's, it's just, it's pointless. It's useless energy. Let's, let's build, let's evolve together. Let's grow together. Let's, let's network. Why, yes. you know, why, why, why Kate, why, you know? Yes. And again, Carl, I, I really hope that we can get, I, I would love to have you on the channel again for many more. Because <laughs> I, as, as we were talking, you know, the wheels in my head were turning. I'm just like, oh, wow. I have some things, I, some ideas I'd like to throw Carl's way about some stuff <laughs> we can do together later on yeah, in the future. Definitely. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm up to that. I'm up to that because I can bring these uh, nostalgic, all these moments back to people. And again, it just shows that anything is, is possible. Right. That you've got that passion and that desire and, and you love people. 
I think you would get there, Billy Will. That fortitude and keep knocking on the door. But yeah, music has certainly opened up so many areas for me as well. Absolutely. I know we could have a whole, we could have a whole <laughs> interest of music alone. Oh my God. I could see imagine <laughs> the kind of, the kind of genres we'll throw at each other. Yes. Because I always, you know, I always, I think people a lot are like, people that I know, even my own family, they're really surprised at some of the music I listen to. They're like, wow. But it's all stuff that, you know, I look at it like a learning experience. Like I may be onto yeah. something that you may not know. And then you end up yes. liking it. That's happened so many times with people that have heard the type of music I like. You know, you mentioned jazz before yes. early in our interview. My father, probably the biggest jazz fan other than my grandfather that I know. He's so when you mentioned jazz, I'm like, oh my God, we got another jazz fan. I'm just I'm starting to get into jazz a little bit recently. Oh, yeah, I, I think I think what's lovely with, with your life's journey and, and both my late parents were huge black and coal fans. Um, oh, me too. He was their number one. And then Sinatra, uh, oh. Ella, Sarah Vaughan, mm -hmm. uh, all, all of those, uh, and then Rose McClooney, so many uh, great singers. But then my oldest brother kind of led me in, in another way with Pink Floyd and, and Zeppelin. And I think it's always interesting to get these different genres. Yeah. And then I had my own tastes of things that I absorbed. But I think what I've loved is when I've heard about someone, when I heard about Snarky Puppy, you know, and, and I thought, wow, they're, they're an amazing Robert Glass for Experiment, you know, all these different people. And I thought, wow. And then I've managed to get to see them as well. Right. And then it's blown my mind even more because as a drummer, you know, I, I'm looking at the way they shift the loop, you know, oh. and how, how they t change that toy signature, if you like, that rhythm. Right. And like just it's just mind blowing, you know, and all these different samples and all these different things that go in and yeah. But I'm open to anything. It's it's got to stay. Definitely was important with you from. Absolutely. I mean because yeah. yeah, music, like I said, we could talk about music a whole, you know, I'm sure a whole whole length the other interview. I mean, Sinatra, you, you mentioned Sinatra, you also mentioned Sammy Davis also in this interview. They're the reasons why Rat Pack Matinee, Rat Pack. I yes. Love the, the love monster, the rat pack. Yeah. Love the rat pack. And it was so funny because I came across I mean, I, I've always known who these guys were. Sammy Davis was more I was more he was more prevalent in my home as opposed to Sinatra. I didn't yes. get put into Sinatra really until like later on in my years. And when I did, I became obsessed. The man was insanely brilliant. Insane. Oh my God. I could we could go on for days about Sinatra. I mean, not just his music, but just him as a person. Just an intriguing figure. Just yes. a fascinating figure. Amazing. Absolutely. Fascinating. Yes, Fascinating. absolutely. Fascinating. Yeah. No, I know. I, I think I know exactly what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, I, I think where Sinatra was so brilliant was that he, he just knew music so incredibly well, didn't he? How how to phrase things, how, how to work with the notes, you know, like instruments. He had that mindset, didn't he? Because he listened to the orchestration. Yeah. And how the instruments... Well, yep. he had that same, and you see these these guys again. You know, it's not about bettering. You know? I, I hate that term, but what it is is they they only come along once in a lifetime, don't they? Really, you can have your Gregory Porters and your Michael Bublé's and whoever they're great singers, and I've seen them as well, and I love their voices. But I think with Nat, the reason I always remember my mum saying this you could have given Nat a nursery rhyme and he would have still made it sound so beautiful where not taking anything away from Sinatra I don't think Sinatra could have done a nursery rhyme I know what you mean like Nat do you know what I mean he, I know what you mean he just got that innate ability with his phrasing with his voice his, mm -hmm. his, that velvet voice and of course he was the most phenomenal pianist yeah that just made it effortless. He wasn't even looking at the mm -hmm. it, was he? And and I think that's they're the kind of things that I I look at, you know, and, and just they connect with me. Just how we could sing so beautifully a cappella, you know, yeah. the calypso song he does with the congas, yep. the bongos, and oh my god, that voice. <laughs> so, I know what you mean. I know what you yeah. mean. So, I know what you mean. They're all 
great people, Sammy and, and Dean. Yeah, and I love the one. We're going to definitely get into it, Carl. We're going to definitely get into it. <laughs> well, we can end it right here, Carl. I mean, I, I, I just want to say thank you again, Carl. I mean, I... Oh, my goodness. I, I could praise you all day. I could I, I, I could I could throw so many praises your way because you just have no idea how many... I mean, Batman is a character. Batman in general, 89. It's just Batman 89. My life would not be the same without it. I know that for a fact. For a fact. Without a doubt. Thank God my parents are still alive. They... I had an awesome childhood growing up and my he made sure that my brother and I we were never without and yes when Batman 89 came out I had every single toy I had to, <laughs> I had the VHS it was all I watched I wanted to be nothing and nobody more and you were reason you were a great reason of that so thank you I very appreciate such that. Thank, thank you honestly I thank you so much from the bottom of the hall it's, it's been an absolute joy uh, really has to talk to you and, and share these things your enthusiasm and, and just your love of everything just connects with me so much. I'm eternally grateful.